our motivating problem here is to find a way to express an integer as a linear sum of, well, integer multiples of some other integers. So something like, can I find two integers, a and b, such that 11a plus 17b sums to give 1? Now, some of these you can do by inspection. You might be able to see. You might be able to play around with some numbers and see that, well, three lots of 11 is 33. Two lots of 17 is 34. So if I had two lots of 17 minus three lots of 11, then I would have one. Now that one's, I wouldn't say easy to spot, but it's one that I can spot. In general, it can be a lot harder than that. And indeed, it's not difficult to see that it isn't always possible. Because let's say I wanted to find integers a and b, such that 10a plus 6b was 1. Well, 10 lots of something and 6 lots of something, if the somethings are integers, will give me an even number. So I can't have the sum of two even numbers being one, because that's obviously odd. So it isn't always possible. Now, mathematically, this asks two questions. When is it possible? And when it is possible, what is an efficient algorithm for finding these patterns? Our good friend Euclid is back. If we think of the Euclidean algorithm that we've seen in a previous video for calculating the greatest common divisor of any two non-zero integers. So, if you're going to quote from anybody, quote from yourself. Here's the slide that we had previously and the algorithm that we followed. So what we do is we basically run the Euclidean algorithm and then we run it in reverse. And this actually can help us find a way of finding integers such as the linear sum of them gives um, the greatest common divisor of the two of them. So I have to know what my two numbers that I'm using, the m and the n, are. But I can find the greatest common divisor with um, the Euclidean algorithm. And if my target is either the greatest common divisor or a multiple of that, then I can find solutions. If the target is not a multiple of the greatest common divisor, then I can't. So this is sometimes called the reverse Euclidean algorithm because you literally reverse the steps of it, or sometimes the extended Euclidean algorithm that you run it one way and extend it to come back. And that's finding integers a and b, such as a lots of m, plus b lots of n will sum to give the greatest common divisor of m and n. So each step of the Euclidean algorithm gives us one integer as a linear sum of the others. So this is, if you'll pardon the uh, slide quoting, a slide quoting a slide. Um, this is like slideception going on here. Um, if you'll pardon that, you can see here that what we worked out was we worked out the greatest common divisor of, in this case, 527 and 341, and showed that that was 31. So it should be that I can reverse the steps of this calculation and get 500, some multiple of 527 plus some multiple of 341 being equal to 31. And spotting that is not going to be easy without the algorithm. Because each line sort of finds our greatest common divisor in terms of multiples of other numbers. So we just keep reversing the process till we get back to the top. So the Euclidean algorithm, each step works me down this table as I've laid it out. And the reverse Euclidean algorithm will work me back up to the original um, M and N.
We'll now choose the example from the inset on the slide I showed before to find integers a and b such that 527a plus 341b gives me 31. And these were the four steps of my Euclidean algorithm to show that the greatest common divisor was 31. So if I start at the last non-zero remainder line, it gave me this GCD of 31 as effectively 186 minus, 5, minus 155. Now the line above gave me um, 155 in terms of 341 and 186. So I can now get 341 in terms of 186 and 31. But ultimately, if I look at the top dot point, what I want is I want 31 in terms of 527 and 341. So if I use the top line, which has 527 in terms of 341 and 186, then I can complete my sort of steps back up. And when I do that, what I will get to is I'll get to 527 minus one lot of 341 being 186. But I know I can replace 186 um, as 527 minus 341. So when I apply the top line, what I'm left with is two lots of 527 minus 341 minus 341 being 31. And when I tidy that up, it gives me the two lots of 527 minus three lots of 341 is 31. And you can easily check that that works numerically. I just want to illustrate one more example of our good friend, Reverse Euclid. So that is Reverse Euclid in the mirror, a man who died before he was born and looks the other way. So let's follow Reverse Euclid as well. So an example we already know the answer to off the first slide. Let's find an A and B such that 11A plus 17B is 1. If we follow the Euclidean algorithm, it'll demonstrate that that is indeed possible because if I work this out, the first stage I express um, 17 in terms of an 11 with a remainder of 6, then 11 in terms of 6 with a remainder of 5, 6 as multiple of 5 and a remainder of 1, and lastly, um, no remainder at all of 5 expressed as multiples of 1. So the fact that my last non zero remainder was 1 tells me that this is possible. So I've gone all the way down, and I now want to go all the way back up. So I need to express the last remainder 1 as a multiple of 5s and 6s. So just reversing the first column gives me that 1 is 6 minus 5. I now need to express the next remainder of 5 in terms of 6s and 11s, which hopefully I can do. That um, 1 is 6 minus 5, which is 6 minus 11 minus 6, or 2 lots of 6 minus 11. So I've now got 1 in terms of 6s and 11s, which is not what I wanted. I want 1 in terms of 17s and 11s, so that when I do that to replace the 6s with some um, 17s and 11s, I start with the fact that 1 is 2 lots of 6 minus 11. But I know that I can write 6 as 17 minus 11. So I can, instead of having two sixes, I've got two lots of 17 minus 11, and I've still got the minus 11 at the end. And when I tidy that up, I get the one is two lots of 17 minus three lots of 11, which is exactly what we got by inspection at the start. Thank you, Reverse Euclid.